Americans back in the late 70s would not eat raw fish. The only things that ate raw fish in America were bears. But when a fine cuisine was introduced, it caught on pretty quickly. We're using crickets as an alternate source of getting the same level of protein you would from cows, pigs, chicken, etc. It's actually a superfood that we've been ignoring for a long time. A cricket shelter actually is something that you can use to produce meat inside cities. It's smaller, it's modular, uh, it's unitized, and you can produce the same gram of protein that you'd get from a cow, but do it with insects. And you can do it inside cities. So it actually helps in that equation when it comes to wasting energy delivering uh, different types of foodstuffs. We knew that actually crickets, because they die every six weeks, that's actually a lot of protein you can generate as, as opposed to the amount of time it takes to raise a cow. We need to think about alternate forms of protein because we just can't live the way we live. We eat meat almost every day. And if our population is going to be something like 11 billion people on this planet by the end of the century, we can't keep on eating all those cows and pigs and chickens. Uh, so we need to have other forms of protein. The United Nations in 2013 said we've got to get America and Europe thinking about insect-based protein sources. They were thinking about crickets, they were thinking about mealworms, and a lot of other things. What does a cricket taste like? Well, that's a tough question because technically you can tune the flavor of crickets. What we've done with our shelter is we actually feed them different things, and that influences their body's metabolism, which changes their ultimate flavor. So when we feed them apple cores or uh, lime rinds, their body takes on that flavor. And when we mill them into a flour, you'll actually taste the apple inside the crickets. If you just leave them as plain crickets, a ground up granola, that's probably the best thing I can think of when it comes to the actual taste. We've learned a lot in creating these kinds of uh, spaces for them because if there were too many compact in a confined area, crickets go crazy. They start cannibalizing one another, killing each other, then eating the corpses. So you actually need a lot of space for them. And they like to have sex and we were working hard to make sure that they propagate. So we created something called cricket sex pods, where essentially clubs for the crickets to meet males and females, uh, do their thing, and reproduce and have cricket babies. So we were basically looking at the life cycle of crickets and trying to figure out what really works. I'm pretty sure that Americans are not ready to eat mealworms and bugs. It's just not gonna happen overnight. What they will eat, perhaps, is a powderized form of that that goes into making bagels, pasta, bonbons, things that taste fantastic and they're not really concerned that it came directly from crickets. 